All right, cool. So thank you for joining us for a very special episode of Happy Hour with Heather and Guest. We are joined by members of the band King Bastard, whose album, uh, album It Came From The Void, we reviewed in episode 98 two weeks ago. So thank you so much for uh, taking the time to speak with us. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I um I stopped your guys' Instagram page. <laughs> I saw that you're working you're working on a new album. And um it came from the void is the future, and it looks like the new album that you're working on is you're gonna be going back back into the past. So that that I I really like that concept. And why do you think music you know, going way back. Why do you think music became such an important part of our culture? Um, do you guys have an answer? Yeah, that was a tough question. <laughs> right off the bat, Heather is coming out of the gate storming right off the bat. <laughs> you know what? <clears throat> the new album. We thought we want this to be primal. We want this to be um, like very raw in a sense. And, um, you know, you look at the early histories of people and music has always been important to some sense for, for everybody. And I think part of it is like, it's just this natural form of human expression. And, you know, it's a, it's a way to express yourself and everybody can relate to that. So I think, you know, as time has gone on and people have changed, music has changed, but the fact remains that you know, everybody has this kind of natural instinct to hear something and, and feel something. Yeah. And I thought, I saw you were using some um, primal instruments. I, do you, did you already have those instruments or, or did you go out and did you look for them? We spent a lot of time figuring out what we wanted to use. Um, we always had the idea that we wanted to use a lot of auxiliary percussion and like primal sounding like tribal instruments, but it was really hard. There's a lot out there and it's really hard for us to pick which ones. So we kind of sat around just listening to what they sound like on YouTube and things like that and trying to figure out what we can apply to our music. And then we just ordered a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I, I can't wait to hear it. I, that's to me, I, I love this concept. I can't wait to hear what you guys come up with. Yeah, and, and much like the first album, like it it, it can be listened to, you know, um, in, in isolation. If you want to just listen to the random tracks, you can. But our hope is that everybody is going to listen to it as a story from beginning to end. Everything was done intentionally, just like the first album. And, you know, we only got to hear it mastered front to back pretty recently. and. Like, I, I was just so excited when we heard it. Like, it's, I mean, it's weird to say because we made it, but it's really, it's really good. <laughs> We're very happy with it. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Andrew, well, I, what do you think? I, I have a less hard hitting question. Um, <laughs> one, one thing that I really appreciated is that you guys sort of took the time to let this album come together. I think I remember reading on Bandcamp, it was three years in the making. So it seemed like all the choices were very deliberate. Um, so I, one of the, it's, it, you give credit to something called Reed's Closet, where you uh, recorded some, some of the things. I was just curious what that was. <laughs> oh. So when we recorded this album, um, the first album, we recorded it mainly live on the floor in the studio um, with this guy, Colin Marston. He has a studio in Queens. And we recorded all of the main tr like rhythm tracks and everything together live. We mic'd our amps up and we played together in the same room. No click or anything. Um, all the songs we did like that. And then COVID happened immediately after. Everything shut down. So we recorded all of the extra instruments, extra guitar parts in my basement. Um, and partially uh, we used some of my friends' uh, closets <laughs> because yeah. what we needed was, I don't have a vocal booth or any way to isolate sound. 
I didn't want to capture room sound in my basement because it sounds like crap. So we recorded um, in my friend's closet. <laughs> what we did was we took styrofoam and taped it to the walls of his closet. Um, and I set up a mic. I like propped it up on like some stools because the mic stand I had was only for an amp. So it was like this tall. Um, and we set it up in his closet and it wasn't a walk-in closet. It was one of those like shutter doors, like you keep like your comforter in there. So we <laughs> shoved our synth player in there and shoved a microphone in there. We're like, all right, let her rip. Like, <laughs> Let's do some takes. And it, it, we're pretty happy with how it came out. Yeah, we weren't going to let COVID derail it more than it already was. Yeah. Sure. Well, I, I mean, I I wouldn't have known had, had, you, had you know, had you not just told the story. Um, and I'm happy to cut that out, by the way, so that the, you know, no one will know. But I think it's actually. <laughs> we're we're proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, leave it in. <laughs> it's really impressive. You know, I think um, one thing that I've sort of learned through this whole, ex I mean, Heather and I have always done this show virtually. Um, you know, we, we just use uh, StreamYard to talk. She lives in Illinois. I'm currently staying with my parents in South Carolina. Um, but I feel like so many bands I've talked to who were plagued by, the, by COVID during recording had to be creative um, and come up with ways to make things work. So I think it's really a testament to you guys that you let, you know, you, t you took a certain amount of time, you didn't feel rushed, but at the same point you had put in enough time, you weren't allowed to, uh, about to allow it to get derailed to let it come out. So yeah, I'm grateful well, you stuck to your guns. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. Because it was like, we've been working on it for so long at that point. We are like, no, like this has to just like, we got it. We have to finish this. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it was our first, uh, any of our first, recorded releases ever so we really wanted to make it as good as we could um I, I there was no point in just like rushing to get it out there because we couldn't tour with anything because everything was shut down so we were like well we have as much time as we want to work on this there's no deadline there's no nothing it, let's just make it as good as we can it the only the only constraint was really our own patience because you know, after a while, you keep changing things and changing things, and you like, ah, oh, I don't really like this. We could, you could just go down a rabbit hole, and it would be like the album that never finishes. We we had to eventually be like, okay, this is it. Like, we're ready. Yeah, I <laughs> for you, uh, wow, that blow that kind of blows my mind. You guys, <laughs> none of you have ever recorded anything before this. I'm really, that's really impressive. I'm really, like, the sound that you guys got out of it and what you did with the album, I think, is phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and that's that's high praise because Heather is, uh, in, in, in our duo, Heather is more of the, like, vinyl enthusiast. She has a record collection. She really knows how to appreciate the art of music, whereas I'm more of a digital download guy, you know, I, I, I'm whatever, you know, whatever, if that's meat and potatoes versus Heather with the filet mignon. So uh, hearing, hearing her talk about the sound you were able to get without having that much recording history is really impressive. So yeah, if people were going to listen to it on vinyl from the beginning. That was our, that was our intent. Yeah. Well, if you, if you're watching this and you haven't already gotten King Bastard's album, I don't think there's a better uh, endorsement than Heather saying that it that the sound is incredible. So yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah, you do you still have you still have? I thought I saw that you have like three different variants. Do you yeah. still have them? We do. Yeah, yeah. we have. Yeah. All, all, I think we have all three. I think we have like yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure we have all three. And and if we don't have all three. Um, at least one of them is available on uh, this website called The Cosmic Peddler. And this guy's got all sorts of vinyls. He helped us put out the release. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, great website. Paul from The Cosmic Peddler. They, it's a great like vinyl collection website. Great shop. And uh, yeah, he helped us come up with one of the um, exclusives that you can get on his website. Awesome. So now that... Uh, hopefully things have settled down enough or is there a plan to tour uh with the album or is it still going to be more of a studio uh, so project? 
Yeah, so with this album, we did like shows here and there. That guy we just mentioned, Paul, hooked us up with shows in Texas. We've played um, some stuff in Vermont, and we've got shows lined up in the kind of in the Northeast, which is our area. Um, but um, as far as that first album, most of the the performance of that is is where uh, it's it's kind of like that era is kind of moving aside now, and we're moving into the next. Gotcha. It's phase, and we're going to start playing the the new stuff live. Do we have? I know we have some shows lined up, but do we have anything for the summer planned yet, or no? Summer, we don't have anything booked okay. yet. Okay. All right. But we're going to have so we're going to have a big uh, so tour two, heading two, down south. To be announced. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm probably going to be in South Carolina for the foreseeable future, but technically, I live in Virginia, and Heather's in Illinois. So if you're going to hit any of those states, let us know. Um, yeah. South Carolina is yeah. probably a real possibility, right? Oh, Maybe yeah. even Virginia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I, yeah. I grew up in New York City, so uh, I'm I'm familiar. I, I know I'm sort of familiar where Stony Brook is. I know where that's where you guys are. Um, yeah. And if you recorded uh, in Queens, I probably passed by the studio at some point. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but depending on where it was. But yeah. Uh, it was like right is- out- when I'm sorry, when is the uh, do you have an idea of when the next album will be released? We really don't. Um, we just got the masters like three days ago, okay? So, we now that we have all the recording, mixing, mastering done, we're kind of in the next phase of release planning. Um, we kind of thought we would be taking way longer with this, so we're happy that we have more time than we thought since we do want to shoot for some time in the summer 2024 so that we can tour right when it releases. Um, but in terms of a date, we really don't know yet because we're still figuring things out. We want to release yeah. it and do it right. Yeah. Yeah. It's done. It'll be out like, it's got to be out within the next few months. Right? Yeah, it'll be like spring. So Sometimes spring, spring time, yeah. yeah. 2024. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm in no rush. I, I don't want to speak for Heather. Um, because I feel like you guys, one thing I really appreciate is that you seem to have a pretty, whether or not behind the scenes, there's a lot of arguments about whether or not this is done or this needs to be remixed. Um, I really like the final product. So I feel like you guys have a good system where you know sort of how long something needs to take. So please feel free to take as long as you want for this <laughs> album. As long as this album comes out at some point. <laughs> then I'm happy. Yeah, it's coming out. It's coming, it's coming out. <laughs> we, yeah. we, we got the master, so it's... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we heard it. It's done. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, with the last album, we didn't have... A, you know, like, like we said, our first release, we didn't have much of a deadline or anything. So making that thing was very... We were perfectionists about it, and we took our time. I mean, it was also it was also COVID, so it was like... You know we can't tour on it anyway, but um, but we really took our time with that one, and um, uh, we weren't so sure if it was done, and we wanted to add this and that. Um, this album we had a deadline. We were like November, it's got to be done. Yeah, and so we we had to stick to that. And so I th- I think if we didn't have a deadline, we could still have been working on it to this day, and like you know into who knows when. But but we had to. We knew ourselves. We knew we'd go crazy if we if we didn't like. Cut it off at some point, and I, it's totally for the better. Because yeah. this album sounds, yeah, I think this album sounds great. And we still yeah. drove ourselves crazy because we recorded, <laughs> yeah. we recorded, we finished recording in the studio like November seventh or something like that, and we had a mixing book deadline November twenty eighth or something like that. So we had a lot to do when we went home, and like the night before, like the twenty seventh, me and Arthur <laughs> yeah. were like recording the drum parts and going back and forth and listening back to everything for like twelve hours straight, so that we can get everything to the guy mixing on time and hit the deadline. Yeah. And I mean, we kind of we missed it by like an hour or yeah, two. Yeah, it was yeah. like submitting a school assignment or something <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're working up until like 2 a.m. getting these mixes, the, getting all the tracks lined up and ready. Because when we do these drums, there's just so many, there's so many takes and so many tracks and all this, you know, it's supposed to sound like a big, uh, you know, big tribe. And so when you uh, translate that into the modern world, it ends up being like a million drum tracks. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, uh, not fun to deal with. 
Oh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> but yeah, I can't wait to hear what this sounds like. <laughs> Especially when you say you use, you know, trying to get the the sound of, you know, primitive instruments and the percussion and um, yeah, that sounds really interesting. I can't, I can't wait to hear what it sounds like. We're very excited for everyone to to hear it. Yeah, yeah. I want to know what the response is going to be because it's definitely yeah. a, it's a different sound from the first album, um, but it keeps it keeps everything that we love about the first album. So, you know, it's um, it's still telling the story. It still has some psychedelic elements to it, um, but it's there, there are some parts of it that are just so much heavier than, than the first album ever got to. Um, but that that is also, you know, facing the duality of like all these like, you know, uh, you know, hand drums and uh, kind of like more calm, like jazzier parts. So mm -hmm. we're going to take people on a journey again. And the other thing about this album, this newer one, is on the first album, we had a synth player. And pretty much right around, right before the first album released, we parted ways just due to musical differences. You know, we're still good friends, but um, that was a challenge in and of itself because now we're ready to play these songs live and we're missing a member. So we had to come up with ways to rework the songs for the live shows where it still retains that feeling like you're actually at home listening to the album, but it's done as a three piece now. So we can't give you everything like the saxophone and things like that and like certain synth parts, but we try to make up for it with like doing sort of like a live version of the song and there's some parts that are improvised you might be different every time you come see us there's some parts that are core to the song that we're going to do it like the album um, and now with this newer album it's going to sound a little different because we're down a member so it's a three-piece yeah yeah right this leads me to believe that there's going to be a, a third album with a, another theme. <laughs> yes. yeah. We've already been working on a song for the new, new album. But we, yeah. 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 This is all the old, new album. Yeah. yeah. This, now, this may not be practical, but um, in case recording uh, in the basement or in one of your friend's closets was good luck, Perhaps uh, at some point in the future, you re-include re that in one of the recordings. <laughs> well, yeah. So for some of the stuff on this album, we, um, you know, we did it at home again. So we did like, it in this room. Yeah, in this room. Yeah. <laughs> so, there, you, there you go. All right. Yeah. Well, you'll have to you'll have to see if that's your good luck charm. That sounds <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> We're gonna find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think what was. For I mean, for us, when we, I, so usually the way our show works is Heather and I will take turns picking a band to talk about that week. So I picked your band really just because of the name. The name is what helped me, King Bastard. Um, and then we listened to the music, and it was really interesting how a lot of what you guys had talked about in in the way you had hoped it was perceived you know, that you could listen to the songs individually, but that it's really a collective story. Um, Heather and I both got that. Like, we both felt the same thing. It was really cool. And then by the third, because I listened to the first two tracks, and it's really pointing you in one direction. And then the third track kind of makes a sharp left turn. Um, and it was unique. I really hadn't heard anything like that before. Um, you know, there are elements of it, psychedelic, doom, sludge, stone, you know, whatever, that obviously every band dips into, but the way the deliberate choices you guys made were uh, unique. So please keep that up. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. When we listened to the show um, from the other day, like we all said, like, oh man, like these guys have gotten they get it like more than like other people get it. Like you guys really, <laughs> you guys really understood what we were going for, and like everything you were saying, it's like, man, this is like. Did we send them like a press release or something? <laughs> like this is like this is exactly what we've been saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, some sometimes it all works. You know, 
the the you find people out there who are receptive to what you're doing um, and, you know, pick up what you're putting down. And that's, I mean, that's basically what we try to do with this show is shine the light on bands who may not be as well known as they should be. Um, you know, I think it was just serendipitous that I happened to be going down the YouTube algorithm and I was like, whoa, King Bastard, better check these guys out. <laughs> I was going to ask, yeah, where was it? You found it on YouTube? I th think I, yeah, it was, you know, either one of the, cha one of like Mr. Doom 666 oh, or one of, the, one of the channels. And I was just like, cause eventually I just see so many and usually it just comes down to either the name or the album cover as the, the differential. So um, right. this time it worked. The un the universe, Heather and I always believe the universe will, will feed us good bands. Uh, somehow we just have to be open. So, yeah, that's why having the uh, really striking album artwork is important, you know, because, um, like what Andrew said, you know, if you're going down the YouTube rabbit hole and how do you want to, how do you want to stand out from everybody else, you know, have a really cool name or really awesome album art, you know, it kind of set yourself apart from everybody else. Yeah, well, you, I mean, your, your band, everything seems to work well in conjunction. You know, the, the titles of the tracks, the music, the album art, the name, like it all sort of is working in sync with each other. So I'll be excited to see what the new album looks like uh, and what the title is. But, <laughs> but if you don't have to reveal that now by any stretch. <laughs> yeah. We still got to plan out what we're doing. So, <laughs> well, I leave it to you. You've you've already earned. I'm already on the bandwagon. So you guys do whatever you want, and I'll be proclaiming that you need to pick up the new King Bastard whenever it drops. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So. Well, there unless any... going. I'm sorry, Heather. Yeah, I was just going to ask you: Is there anything else that you want to discuss or tell us? I don't, I don't think so. I, I mean, you know, probably a lot of people might not know that we have the new album coming out, right? Oh, yeah, probably a lot of people don't so, know. So, you know, so. definitely just wanted to get the word out, like, please be patient, and it's coming, it's done. Mm -hmm. It's just we got to, you know, work out the last little, you know, business side details and, like, just be open to hearing a new story from us and, Hopefully, you know, accepting and liking that we took it in a different direction, but we kept everything that we love about the first one, too. Yeah, it's not space, but it's still sci-fi. Yeah, mm -hmm. 100%. So, cool. Um, and uh, so it's probably going to come out around spring of next year, and we've got uh, we got shows lined up. We haven't uh, fully officially announced those yet, but we'll announce all of them. Um, and then we're, and we're still in the process of booking more too. And so this summer we're definitely going to head, I think we're going to head down South, um, do something similar to what we did last year where we're going to maybe go to Texas. So we'll probably hit like Virginia and, and uh, the Carolinas and, and all that good stuff. So, yeah, we gotta, we gotta head out um, to Illinois too at some point. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 That would be great. That would be great. I can, uh, if you come, uh, if you're near the Chicago area, I can give you some venues that you can contact. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to speak with us. And I'm really excited about the, the new album. We'll get the word out um, and people can find you on social media. Just look for King Bastard. Yep. Yeah, King Bastard, the band, or just King Bastard. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so yeah, much for having us. Thank, thank you, guys. Have a good one. You, you too. too. Thanks. Bye.